Welcome to this explainer video introducing Silicon Valley Mystery, a clue collecting roll and write game created by Daniel Belabus and Chris Ward. In Silicon Valley Mystery, you are detectives tasked with solving a mystery quicker than any other player. Whoever scores the most points is declared the winner. You gain more points for gaining clues when they are newer, called freshness, as opposed to gaining as many clues as possible. Let's look at how you set up the game. A scenario like this has a title and it also shows the number of clues that you will need to collect to end the scenario. It also lists the clues for each one. Each clue matches a region on the map and it also shows the type of the clue and the flavor text a description. The scenario uses a matching combined map and detective notebook. Each player should have their own. Each player rolls a d6 to determine which region they start in, and they can start in any location in that region by marking the location. Then determine the starting player randomly. Let's look at how clues work in the game. Silicon Valley Mystery is an abstract mystery solving game. Players are welcome to theorize the solution to the mystery and scenarios typically follow a loose story, but players actually score points from gaining clues and nothing else. Scenarios define where players can find clues on a map through a combination of regions and types. Okay, when a player knows enough information to gain a clue, for example, they know the number of the region and the type of clue they have. They mark it on their sheet at the highest level of freshness. Let's say like this. So now the player knows that there is a level one freshness uh, clue at a residential location in region 2. This means that all other players now know that there is a clue available of the same matching region and type and may mark it as available and active. However, it enters play on their sheets at one freshness level lower than the level it was when the active player claimed it. If another player has already marked the clue as active, then instead they change its freshness value to match the new value. A player then needs to travel to and end their turn in two matching type locations in the matching region that match an active clue. Then they gain that active clue at its current level of freshness. Let's look at what players can do in their turn on each round. In each round, players take it in turns to roll 1d6 and decide what to do with the value. This can be one of the following options. Movement. Movement is based on the value of the die. So with a six, for example, players can move six spaces. Let's say I start it here. I will move one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's where I end my turn. Players are allowed to go back on the route. They can also take a different route back. If you land on a space that contains a combination of region and type to contain a clue, mark the clue in your notebook at its current level of freshness. So for example, if I know that there is level two social clue in region four, all I need to do is to visit uh, two social locations. So let's say I roll my die and I roll a three. And let's say I begin my term here. So with three movements, I can do one movement here, pick this one up, two and three. And this way I visited at least two uh, locations matching the uh, type of clue that I need to collect. 
and I can score that clue for myself at level two. Speak to an informant. You can look at the left column of the scenario sheet and matching the number that you rolled, you can uh, take a look at the numbers and see how many clues there are in region three. So for example, uh, in this case, there are two clues in region three. So you must uh, make a mark on your sheet that there are two clues somewhere in region three. And the other action, it hit the street, is basically the same, but instead of the region numbers, you can check the right column and see, based on the dice value, as you can see here, you can check if there's a social, an office or residential uh, clue. Sabotage. Use the dice value to sabotage the investigation of another player. You do this by choosing a player and asking them to reduce the freshness of an active clue in a matching location type or region by one. Then, at the end of each round, all players reduce the freshness of active clues by one level. How does the game end? When a player gains the amount of clues required by the scenario, finish the round and the game ends. Players score the number of clues multiplied by the freshness level. So for example, three freshness level three clues are worth nine points. Five freshness level two clues are worth 10 points. Each player should also explain what they think happened in the scenario. This is purely for fun, but you might want to consider rewarding bonus points for whoever is most accurate or has the best interpretation of clues. We hope you enjoy Silicon Valley Mystery and thank you very much for playing.